Aphrodite is the goddess of love, beauty, and fertility. Also associated with sensuality and seduction, she was known for her extreme beauty. However, Aphrodite's reputation was not always positive, and she was sometimes accused of being capricious and selfish. She was said to have caused many conflicts and disagreements between gods and men due to her constant quest for attention and adoration. The story goes that Gia forged a sickle from indestructible metal and gave it to Cronus. Then, together, they devised an ambush for Uranus. When Uranus descended to Earth to meet Gia, Cronus attacked him and castrated his father with the sharp sickle. Uranus' genitals were thrown into the ocean, creating a bright white foam. Amid a whirlpool of foam and waves that churned vigorously, a being of unparalleled beauty was being born. The goddess Aphrodite, the very embodiment of love and beauty, had been born of an unusual union. The mingling of the sea with the remains of Uranus, the god of the sky, cast out by his son, Cronus, in an act of rebellion. The sun shone on the waves, making the water sparkle like a thousand diamonds, while the divinity slowly emerged from the depths. The ocean, aware of the magnificence of its creation, carried her to shore in a seashell adorned with pearls and coral, while a chorus of nereids and tritons sang in her honor. As she reached the shore, the earth trembled gently beneath her feet, as if she could feel the power of the new goddess. Aphrodite, resplendent in all her glory, looked around her, marveling at the world around her. The wind blew through her golden hair, enveloping her in a halo of divine light. Just then, Zeus appeared before her, his presence as powerful as thunder itself, and spoke. You were born of violence and chaos, but you will bring love and harmony to this world. You will be adored and revered, but also feared and envied. The slender young woman bowed her head in respect and replied, Zeus, I pledge to fulfill my destiny and embrace my role in this world. I will bring love and beauty to those who seek me and share my wisdom with those who wish to learn. Thus began Aphrodite's life as the goddess of love and beauty. As time passed, her power grew and her name became synonymous with desire and seduction. Gods and mortals alike sought her out, hoping to gain a fraction of her grace and wisdom. Even the mightiest gods could not resist her magnificent charm, and her love affairs became legend. Since her arrival at Olympus, the goddess generated serious conflicts among the gods, for her beauty and perfect figure awakened the baser instincts of all the divinities. However, the goddess up to that time was not interested in any man. After a while, and after several conflicts with the kingdom of the gods, the god of the forges arrived, with an act of cruel revenge against his mother Hera, for her dismal contempt since he was born. Hephaestus asked to return to Olympus and followed by a demand that surprised all the gods. Hephaestus raised his voice and in front of everyone asked for the hand of Aphrodite, the beautiful goddess, in marriage. Zeus, surprised by the request of his son, accepted the proposal to avoid future disputes between the gods for the love of the beautiful goddess. Thus, Hephaestus married her and gained prestige on Olympus, becoming a highly criticized couple. Over time, Aphrodite admired how Hephaestus adored her for her beauty, but despite this and the great attention she received from him, she did not feel at ease and repudiated their marriage. When Hephaestus settled on Olympus, he was given a wide valley among the mountains to establish his forge. He chose the Cyclops, one-eyed giants, as his assistants as they were the best craftsmen in the world. Hephaestus became very famous on Olympus, creating objects for the gods and beautiful gifts for Aphrodite. However, the marriage deteriorated due to Hephaestus' dedication to his work, which made his wife feel lonely and displaced. Ares, the god of war, began to court Aphrodite and she, enchanted, became his lover, betraying Hephaestus. Ares and his lover, fearing discovery, recruited Alec Tryon to protect them. The young man kept watch while the lovers met in secret. However, one night Alec Tryon fell asleep and failed to warn them of the arrival of Helios, the sun god, who discovered the infidelity. Helios informed Hephaestus of his wife's betrayal. The furious god, wishing to take revenge, wove a net of unbreakable gold and placed it on the bed where Aphrodite and Ares were. When the sun rose, both were caught in the net and exposed before all of Olympus. The lovers suffered the shame of their infidelity, 
while Alectryon was punished by Helios and turned into a cock, condemned to crow every dawn as a reminder of his failure. Time passed, and out of pity, Zeus released the unfaithful couple, on the condition that they were forbidden to see each other again, for their love was impure, and could never be given again. However, the gods did not comply with what the god Zeus said and continued to see each other secretly, giving themselves with desire, because their love and lust were so great that they did not mind breaking with the designs of the king of Olympus. So, the gods spent many years together, and from their love were born five children, Anteros, Dimas, Harmony, Eros, and Phobos. High on Mount Ida, the sun was shining brightly on a young Trojan prince named Paris, who was enjoying the scenery while tending his flock. Unbeknownst to him, he was about to become embroiled in a divine conflict that would change his life and the fate of the world forever. It was a day like any other, until suddenly Eris, the goddess of discord, appeared at a wedding to which she had not been invited. Furious at having been excluded, she threw a golden apple at the banquet, which bore the inscription, For the most beautiful, three goddesses, Hera, Athena, and Aphrodite, vied for the prize, each claiming to be worthy of the apple. Zeus, the supreme god, did not want to get involved in the dispute for fear of offending any of the goddesses. So, he decided that a mortal should be the judge in this contest of divine beauty. After careful consideration, he chose Paris, the Trojan prince, for his judgment and wisdom. Suddenly, in front of the boy, the three goddesses appeared, in all their celestial splendor. The young prince was stunned by the magnificent presence of the goddesses and their dazzling beauty. Athena, the goddess of wisdom, stepped forward and said to him, Young prince, if you choose me as the most beautiful, I will grant you unparalleled wisdom and war skills. Then Hera, queen of the gods, approached Paris and promised him, If you declare me the most beautiful, you will become the ruler of a vast empire that will extend beyond what you can imagine. Finally, Aphrodite emerged from the shadows, and her body wrapped in a golden glow dazzled all present. Her shining eyes and seductive smile captivated the prince, who felt his heart beat with unknown intensity. The goddess slowly approached him, and each step she took seemed to leave a trail of rose petals and soft breezes in the air. Arriving next to Paris, Aphrodite bowed her head and whispered in his ear in a voice that sounded like the echo of a sea breeze on a calm summer night, and said, If you choose me, I will grant you the love of the most beautiful woman in the world Helen of Sparta. As he uttered these words, a vision of Helen appeared before the boy's eyes, a woman of unparalleled beauty, with hair as golden as the sun and eyes as deep as the Aegean Sea. The promise of the goddess resonated in the prince's soul, and he could feel his heart and mind struggling in a storm of emotions and desires. The tempting offer of the goddess of love made him question his values and the responsibilities he had as Prince of Troy. He knew that choosing Aphrodite could bring terrible consequences, but the desire for such a deep and matchless love was simply irresistible. As Paris struggled internally with his decision, the other two goddesses watched him with growing impatience and trepidation. The goddess of love, however, seemed to remain calm, certain that the strength of her promise would prevail. Her seductive smile never left her face, and her bright eyes seemed to pierce straight into the Trojan's heart drawing him to her like an irresistible magnet. Finally, with a sigh that seemed to shake her soul, Paris made a decision. He raised his trembling hand and handed the golden apple to Aphrodite, declaring her the most beautiful goddess. At that instant, the air was filled with a palpable tension, while Hera and Athena looked at the Trojan with a mixture of contempt and fury. Their gazes seemed to warn that the prince's choice would have devastating consequences for him, and all those he loved. But it was too late, and the fate was sealed. The boy had succumbed to the power of love and beauty, and the world would never be the same again. And so began the chain of events that would lead to the tragic and epic Trojan War, a conflict that would pit gods and mortals alike against each other and become one of the most enduring and captivating legends of all time. Paris had been captivated by the beauty of Helen of Sparta, the most beautiful woman in the world, according to the promise of Aphrodite. With the help of the goddess, he managed to kidnap Helen and take her to Troy. This provoked the wrath of Menelaus, her husband, and Agamemnon, king
king of Mycenae. Soon, an Achaean army was assembled, ready to recover the queen and avenge the outrage. War broke out, and for years, Trojans and Achaeans engaged in bloody battles on the city walls. The goddess of love, despite her amorous nature, became a fierce warrior in support of the Trojans. One day, as the Trojans and Achaeans clashed on the plain, Aphrodite saw Paris in danger. The Trojan prince had engaged Menelaus in single combat for the love of Helen and was about to be defeated. Without hesitation, the goddess beauty descended to the battlefield, shrouded in a cloud of mist, and rescued the Trojan warrior just before Menelaus could deal him the fatal blow. Paris! The goddess of beauty exclaimed as she carried him safely back to the city. You must be more cautious in battle. I cannot always protect you, said the goddess. The young man, ashamed of his failure, replied humbly. Aphrodite, my life is in your hands. Without you, I would not have Helen by my side, and the city of Troy would be lost. I will do everything in my power to honor your help and protect my people. Meanwhile, in the Achaean camp, the warriors lamented the goddess' intervention and vowed to redouble their efforts to conquer Troy. Among them, Achilles, the greatest of the Greek warriors, was preparing to join the battle and change the course of the war. The struggle between the Trojans and Achaeans intensified, and Aphrodite continued to support the Trojans in their most difficult moments. But in the end, the fate of Troy was sealed. Despite their valiant efforts and the support of the goddess of love, the city fell to the cunning of the Achaeans and the legendary Trojan horse. The war came to an end, leaving behind a trail of death and destruction. The Achaeans celebrated their victory, but also mourned the fallen. The city lay in ruins, and Helen of Sparta was taken back to her home with Menelaus. Aphrodite, with a heavy heart, watched from above as her protege lay dead on the battlefield. Although the goddess of love had intervened on several occasions to protect the Trojans, she could not change the fate the gods had woven for them. After several years, in the green hills of ancient Phrygia, where the cattle grazed and the streams murmured, Anchises, a handsome mortal shepherd, went about his daily labors. He was a tall, stocky man, with a deep and wise look. His beauty and strength did not go unnoticed by the gods of Olympus, especially Aphrodite, the goddess of love and beauty. One afternoon, while Anchises was tending his flock, his beloved watched him from her heavenly throne. Intrigued and captivated by the young shepherd, the goddess decided to come down to earth and meet this mortal who had aroused her interest. Adopting the appearance of a mortal maiden of extraordinary beauty, the goddess descended to earth and approached Anchises. The young shepherd, upon seeing the beautiful stranger, was captivated by her beauty and grace. Aphrodite introduced herself as a princess from a distant land and they began to converse. Their dialogue was fluid and fascinating as if the two were soulmates destined to meet. Though I cannot explain it, Anchises told her, I feel as if I have known you forever. I have never before experienced such a connection with another being. The beautiful goddess smiled and replied, Perhaps our fates were intertwined before we met. It may be that the gods orchestrated this meeting. In time, the love between Aphrodite and Anchises grew, and the goddess finally revealed her true identity to the young shepherd boy. The boy, amazed and honored, submitted to the goddess' will and became her lover. Together, they consummated their love in the Phrygian lands, far from the eyes of the other gods. From this union Aeneas was born, a boy destined to become a great hero and founder of a new civilization. The goddess took care of little Aeneas and taught him everything he needed to know to face the challenges of the future. As Aeneas grew up, his mother revealed to him his true lineage and told him of his destiny as a leader and founder of a great nation. The young man, full of determination and courage, accepted his destiny and prepared himself for the challenges that life would bring. In another of the voyages of the goddess of love, on the beautiful island of Cyprus, Princess Myra, daughter of King Cyrus, committed a terrible sin by defying Aphrodite, proclaiming that her beauty was superior to that of the divinity. The offense would not go unnoticed and the divinity, angry, decided to punish the young woman for her insolence. Aphrodite's revenge manifested itself in a burning desire that consumed Myrrh for her father. 
For twelve nights, the princess, prey to the curse, visited her father in his bed, taking advantage of the darkness and the king's drunkenness. But on the last night, Cinyras, moved by curiosity, lit a candle and discovered with horror the face of his daughter. Enraged and terrified, the king pursued Mira, intending to kill her. Fleeing from her father, the girl cried out to the gods for mercy, and they, in response, transformed her into a tree. From that tree, months later, a child of extraordinary beauty was born, Adonis. Aphrodite, moved by the newborn, decided to take him to the underworld so that Persephone, the queen of that dark kingdom, would take care of him during his first years. The goddess of the underworld, moved by the innocence and beauty of Adonis, agreed to take care of him in her palace. In time, the young man grew into a boy of unparalleled beauty, whom some even mistook for a god. Years later, the goddess of love returned to the underworld to visit the boy and upon seeing him, she was completely taken by his beauty. The goddess of love, determined to have him as her lover, took him by the hand and prepared to take him to the surface. However, Persephone, furious at Aphrodite's audacity, opposed his departure. Do you think you have the right to take from me what is mine? cried Persephone, as her eyes filled with anger. Your love is selfish. You cannot keep Adonis here forever. He deserves to know the world that was taken from him, replied the goddess with determination. The dispute between the goddesses escalated to such an extent that Zeus, the king of the gods, had to intervene. He ruled that Ephebus should divide his time between the two goddesses, dividing the year into three-thirds, one with Persephone, one with Aphrodite, and the last with whomever he chose. Adonis, attracted by the love and beauty of the Olympian goddess, decided to spend most of his time with her, which left Persephone heartbroken. The young man and Aphrodite enjoyed their love on the surface, while Persephone, in the underworld, lamented the choice of her beloved. The happy days the mortals spent with the beautiful goddess, however, were destined to come to a tragic end. During a hunting party, the young mortal Adonis wandered into a thick forest, following the trail of prey. What he didn't know was that a huge, ferocious wild boar was prowling the area, marking its territory with unparalleled aggressiveness. The boar, upon seeing the hunter, considered him a threat and launched into a ferocious and merciless attack. The sky darkened and the air filled with tension as the boy fought desperately for his life. In the most dramatic moment of the battle, the boar managed to corner the young man, digging its tusks into his side and leaving him mortally wounded. The young man fell to the ground as blood soaked the forest floor. Aphrodite, who had been watching Adonis from Olympus, felt her heart tear as she witnessed the agony of her beloved. With great speed, she descended to earth and reached the man's side just in time to hold him in her arms as he drew his last breath. The goddess of love, grief-stricken at the loss of her mortal beloved, could not contain her sadness and tears began to flow down her face. At that instant, she decided that she would not allow the memory of her beloved to fade with time. She transformed the blood that spilled from her wounds into the anemone flower, a delicate and beautiful flower as a symbol of her eternal love. From that day on, anemones grew in the place where Adonis had met his end. It is said that the young man's death was at the hands of the god Ares, who, upon seeing his also beloved Aphrodite in the hands of another man, became angry with jealousy and decided to put an end to their romance. In a distant land, there was a young woman named Psyche, whose beauty was so extraordinary that people began to compare her to the Lady of Beauty. The people stopped worshipping the goddess, turning their eyes to Psyche, which provoked anger and jealousy of the divinity. Aphrodite called her son Eros, the god of love, and ordered him to make Psyche fall in love with the most despicable and disgusting creature in the world. However, when Eros saw Psyche, he was so impressed by her beauty that he accidentally wounded himself with one of his golden arrows and fell madly in love with her. Meanwhile, concerned about the lack of suitors for Psyche, her parents consulted an oracle who informed them that their daughter was destined to marry a fearsome monster. Desperate, they took her to a mountaintop where they left her, convinced that the monster would come for her. Within hours, the terrifying monster came for her. This was the god Eros. Eros, in his love for Psyche, 
took her to a magical palace, adorned with beautiful gold and marble figures, filled with servants who were willing to help the goddess, where he visited her only in the dark of night. Although Psyche could not see her lover, her love for him grew day by day. However, her sisters, jealous of her good fortune, convinced her that she must discover the identity of her husband, for they feared he was the monster the oracle had foretold. One night, while Eros was sleeping, Psyche lit a lamp and saw her husband, who was the god of love himself. However, a drop of hot oil fell on Eros' chest, awakening him and discovering the betrayal of his beloved. Furious and wounded, the god abandoned Psyche, who was devastated by her loss. Determined to win back the love of Eros, the girl implored Aphrodite to allow her to redeem herself. The goddess, still jealous of the young girl's beauty, decided to subject her to a series of seemingly impossible tests. Psyche, guided by her love and determination, managed to complete each task, although the tests seemed insurmountable. Finally, the goddess, seeing that the woman had overcome each challenge, had no choice but to admit the young mortal's bravery and love. Eros, still deeply in love with her, begged Zeus to allow her to join him as a goddess. The king of the gods, moved by the couple's love and suffering, granted the request and made Psyche a goddess, allowing her to be with her beloved Eros for all eternity. In time, the lovers lived together in harmony, celebrating their love and overcoming the difficulties they had faced. Aphrodite, though reluctant at first, accepted Psyche as part of the divine family and learned to respect her. The goddess of love was well known for her multiple love affairs, Always intrigued by the various gods and mortals who crossed her path, she could not resist the charisma and ingenuity of the divine messenger. Their love affair began when the messenger god fell madly in love with the goddess of love. Hermes was known to be a great seducer and lover, and his love for Aphrodite was no different. However, the goddess did not reciprocate and rejected his advances on multiple occasions. But the god did not give up so easily he continued to woo the beautiful goddess with impressive gifts, poems, and songs. Eventually, the Lady of Beauty began to be attracted to Hermes' devotion to her and began to reciprocate. Aphrodite and Hermes secretly came together on a starry night, and after satiating her baser instincts, the goddess became pregnant. The goddess carried the pregnancy with grace and elegance, and soon gave birth to a beautiful, radiant, and perfect child in every way. The divine couple was delighted with their offspring, and the beautiful child was given the name Hermaphrodite, in honor of his parents. The newborn had the features of both gods, the bright eyes of his mother, and the cunning of his father. Despite the great beauty of Hermaphroditus, he was the victim of his mother's anger and jealousy, because the goddess of love did not want anyone to notice his beauty. She thought that if the rest of the divinities and mortals observed him, they would take away all the attention he possessed. For that reason, Aphrodite decided to hide Hermaphroditus in a distant cave to hide him from the gaze of her admirers. Eventually, however, her caution was not enough, for gods and mortals rumored that the goddess offspring had a beauty beyond compare, even above the goddess of beauty herself. Many gods and mortals longed to see this exceptional being for themselves and came to the cave where he was hidden. As he grew older, Hermaphrodite's beauty only increased, making him even more desirable to many. But the jealous goddess of love continued to keep him isolated, not allowing him to have contact with the outside world. However, her efforts to protect her son proved fruitless. One day the young man emerged from his confinement and unfortunately met his sad end. Aphrodite, the goddess of love and beauty, remains an eternal symbol of passion, desire, and devotion in Greek mythology. Over time, her legacy became a constant reminder that love, in all its forms and manifestations, 